and we are back and uh, finally I am here to talk about my impressions with the Tecton uh, Ulbert or Ulfberg um, I wanted to talk about the speaker itself but before I do that I want to give a couple of quick updates okay um, let's go over them so as you guys know, I was uh, open about the fact that I was going to buy Synergistic Research uh, Galileo SX, and that's exactly what I have done. So let's go over what I have here. So these are the Galileo SX speaker cables that you see here that are being, you know, right now they're just kind of uh, settling. Uh, they, I bought them on the used market, so they are already broken in. I also bought the matching Galileo interconnects, as well as, let's go over this, as well as the Galileo interconnects on the DAC, to go from the DAC into the line stage, okay? I did that, and... Um, Right now, I also, I am using on the boulder, the Galileo power cord, as you can see it right there. All right, so that's what I got going on. And for the first time, I am playing with the PowerCell SX. It has that crazy power cord that, <laughs> it's very difficult to twist it and turn it, guys. Um, it's a very difficult power grid to move. I just threw it there right now because, to be honest with you, this unit doesn't really belong to me. It belongs to the person who let me borrow his Tecton speakers. Steven, thank you again. And so I just literally pulled it out today, and I've had it here for about two weeks. So I figure, well, what a better time to see what this this thing can do, than, you know, than right now with with my new, my Galileo, um, you know, setup, right? So. Yeah, the po that power cord is crazy thick, um, but you know, I I just want to hear the tonality. I want to hear what happens to the presentation with this piece. It's actually very beautiful looking, if you see. So, Gal, it's a Synergistic Research Power Cell SX. In case you're wondering what that is, okay. Now you have an uh, an idea of what it is, and uh, yeah, so. I picked up the Galileo SX, like I said, speaker cables, interconnects, and also two power cords, one of them which you just saw, and I also picked up the Galileo Ethernet, okay? I just wanted to show you guys this puppy. This is crazy. This thing is like, I believe it's like, what, $39.95 for two meters for an Ethernet cable. All right, it's crazy, right? But there you have it, Galileo SX. Just wanted to show you guys what I am working with right now. I just want to concentrate on the system, uh, breaking in the Galileo cables for the time being. I was told about two weeks to let them settle in a new system, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. They have only uh, they've only been in the system for about two days, maybe. Um, so I guess I'll let you guys hear. Um, the system you know as it continues to settle more and more i'm going to throw a couple of videos here and there occasionally so you guys can hear things uh and have an understanding of what is happening to the sound but yeah so um in addition to that i wanted to talk about the center the critical mass center stage 1.5 version 2 footers which are here under the boulder all right Guys, uh, there they are. Let me say this here. Let me think about a way of saying it. Um, I have had it been here. Today is day number 15. All right. I was told 21 days before they, you really are able to hear the capability of what these footers are supposed to do. If you're wondering what they do and they're supposed to do, look them up online. Just Google critical mass center stage 1.5 footers google that you'll find an article a review i believe of someone who did this uh test with 
quite a few of these in their system. Um, but again, I'm, I'm going to be very clear and honest and transparent, you know, as best as I can. Uh, it's been 15 days. I was told 21 days. Uh, at this point, I think, guys, I mean, two weeks and one day into the breaking in of these things, it's not looking good. Uh, I'm not going to BS anybody here. I, I'm not really impressed by any means with these things. On my boulder, okay, on my huge mo mono blocks. Now, I don't know if that would be the same case with the line stage or my DAC or anywhere else, any other component. But with this monster here, my sound went backward, guys. I can't lie about that. I'm not even going to try to hide that. Presentation is not, you know, it lost speed. It lost air. The imaging, the tremendous imaging of the boulder is gone when I did that. Um, it made things sound... I think of the boulder as such a transparent component and also very just fast sounding. It made it sound, things got just a little more relaxed sounding, if that makes sense. But with the real, like, relaxed feeling, um, it also took away the, that speed and quickness that the amplifiers, the agility of the amplifiers. Uh, I don't know if it is because maybe the boulders really just don't need that. It's really a waste for the amplifiers themselves to do that. Um, you know, and they are already sitting on critical mass stands. Although, as you can see, of course, um, the reason why I bought them, if you're wondering, take a look at the foot, right? So the foot is sitting on this metal piece, but it's supposed to be in here in that what, what's called a filter. You see that that's the filter, this platform in the middle footers are supposed to be in there, the feet or the amp, but mine end up being placed on the metal ridge. And that's why I bought those footers to see if it helped the presentation. But to be honest with you guys, I think I prefer the amplifiers on the actual stand than on those footers. Okay. Um, that's my, expert, my experience so far with the footers. I'm not going to say you guys are going to have the same outcome with your components. But what I can tell you is if you own Boulder gear... I don't know if critical mass footers are really for our for, for this type of gear. I really feel Boulder already creates they manufacture such a, a crazy brick of a product when it comes to construction that it's like concrete really that it doesn't really need that. It doesn't really is it's not really asking for that, you know, type of uh technology or isolation device. So yeah, I'm here to admit it. I'm going to say there's no way in hell this is going to transform over the next six days, guys, 15 days in it. It's I just don't believe that today is going to be horrible. Day day 20 is still going to be the same. And then 21 day 21, a, a switch just, you know, f you know, s flips on and all of a sudden things just take off. I uh, just don't believe in that, guys. It should be gradual. I know it should be going through ups and downs like many components, just like tubes, right? One day is good. The other day is bad until they finally reach that peak performance before they begin to deteriorate. So I believe this critical mass footer, I do not recommend it for boulder gear. I really don't. Um, I am going to give you my opinions on perhaps my DAC or even the Mephisto if I can get them to fit under the Mephisto because the Mephisto has very tall feet. And so, um, it, the footers may not even reach the chassis of the Mephisto from underneath. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I was always going to be honest here, you know, and I am being honest, save your money. If you're planning to buy footers for the boulders, don't even do it. I'm telling you, put your money elsewhere. You're wasting your time. Um, and, um, again, I'm not saying the product is garbage. I'm saying with Boulder actually gets worse, the sound. So, you know, if you have another component, feel free to try it. Um, but I'm giving you the, the final word here with Boulder gear, forget about footers, a stand. Yes. By all means, get a stand, you know, uh, you know, whatever stand you like, get it. After that, I don't think their amplifiers really need anything. And that's a great thing, guys, because Boulder told me that themselves. 
Boulder was very honest with me. They told me, you know, but I, of course, you know, you can only believe so much and you want to do your own trials. But Boulder was very honest and specific with me when they when they were telling me constantly, don't worry, put them on a nice platform and be done. I felt like, oh, you know, they probably are saying that to be nice. But you know what? What the heck? I'm going to try it and see if maybe my findings are different. No, that's the that's the case. Now, power cords, I am still yet to try that. And I will be trying power cords at some point with Boulder, um, with the Boulder monoblocks. Um, but um, isolation, again, I'm going to repeat it for my for the fifth time. It's no go. Save your money. Uh, one stand. Boom. Put the amplifier on top or amplifiers if they're monoblocks and call it a day. Uh, OK, moving on from that topic. Um, so you guys know the Tectons are ready to go ready to be shipped out to the owner thank you again steve appreciate that um my personal opinion on the tecton ulfbert or or ubert however you pronounce it <laughs> sorry if i'm if i'm if i'm killing the name but my personal opinion here is that the MSRP on that speaker, for those of you who do not know, is nine. It's twelve thousand dollars, and they had a sale going on. I don't know if it's still going on, uh, where they were selling the speakers for nine thousand USD for the pair. Okay, so let's talk about the pros. The pros of the Tecton. I'm going to say pros of the Tecton is it's a lot of speaker for the money. No question about it. It is a hell of a of a speaker for the money. Um, I think if you are in a position where you're contemplating any of the following speakers that I'm about to list, you're contemplating, and again, there might be more, but th these are speakers that are right off the top of my head. Number one, I would say something like Focal Cantus, Sopras, Martin Logan 13 A's. Maybe even Martin Logan 15 A's, 11 A's. Um, you're considering the smaller Wilson, you know, the Sabrinas, I believe they are. You are considering, you know, a magical A3, for instance. Um, I have not heard the A5, so I can't comment on the A5. I haven't really heard it critically, um, so I can't comment on the A5. Magical A3. Um, you're contemplating uh, BMW speakers, you know, such as the 802 D3s, or you're contemplating 803s. Uh, you are thinking of along the lines, let me think in my head, um, Sonos Faber, the Olympicus, as an example, that's another example of a speaker. Um, you are a person that is co contemplating, um, you know, a speaker that is anywhere from 20,000 USD MSRP and below. If you are contemplating a speaker around that price point, you ought, you, you really ought to hear Tecton speakers. I think you are definitely the perfect candidate to hear a speaker like the Tecton. Um, you're not going to feel shortchanged. You're not going to feel shortchanged in terms of performance. You're not going to feel disappointed in terms of what they bring to the table. Um, it is really, really a speaker that at times when I sat down for hours to listen to it, I was scratching my head thinking, wow, $9,000 or 12, you know, um, for this, it's, it's a really good speaker. You know, granted, I had a crazy amount of electronics behind it, uh, but needless to um, you know, regardless of the components that I had, I still got a great presentation. And I know most of you guys are not going to have the level of electronics that I own behind them. I get that, but it's all relevant. I think the speaker is going to perform um, as good as it can, given the components that you have behind it. Remember, no speaker is coming to to coming into your room to fix your subpar components it's not it doesn't work that way right no speaker is coming to help you with that if you have crappy amplification if you have crappy electronics there's no speaker that's coming to fix that unfortunately that's just how it is so in regards to the presentation i would say the highs were actually 
very very detailed uh that beryllium tweeter in the middle was very 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 interesting i heard a lot of uh it reminded me a lot of the focal magical presentation it did it reminded me of that ultra detail resolution which created a very beautiful imaging effect the imaging of the speaker for such a tall speaker i thought i thought it was incredible i thought it had a lot of separation uh height obviously the cabinet is so big that of course it's impossible not to get a tall presentation it had a um, great um presence in the room i never felt like i needed to crank it up louder to really feel the music in me and you know in the room it was very effortless to be honest with you, I was very, very surprised how effortless the speaker, and it could be due to the sensitivity, which is 96 decibels. Um, and uh, it really, I let the Boulder monoblocks push the speakers pretty loud, and speakers really never, never quit, never tapped out on me. And I thought that was incredible. Um, the mids are very, like I said, the, the high frequencies are very, very um, detailed. It's got a lot of uh, extension there. The mid-range, I thought the, the mid-range, in my opinion, was very, very good. It's a very, very good, very good presentation. It was very bold. It had a lot of um, body to it. I never felt it constrained or thin or anemic. Um, it was very, it was projected into the, into the room really, really nicely. Uh, pretty even with the high frequencies. I didn't feel like... It had more highs than mids or more mids than highs. I thought that was pretty balanced there. It was a very nice balancing effect. When it comes to the highs, um, to the I'm sorry, to the lows, the bass. The bass, the bass was good. I have to take in consideration, guys, that the speakers only had, with me anyway, a little over 100 hours. All right, so I'm assuming, of course, the drivers are going to get better over time. They're going to get loose. They're going to be more flexible um, and move. And, you know, they're going to get faster. I have to believe that happens to any driver. So the Tecton drivers are no different. The base was actually in my room. Uh, it was good. Was it some of the best? No, it was not. But overall, when I look at the speaker without picking it apart, right? I would say the presentation is certainly a presentation that needs to be heard, especially when you take in consideration a you know the, the you know the, the market you know the, the price point of the speaker. It, it, you really do have to do that. You have to look at what the speaker's worth and what you're getting, and you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot more bang for the for the buck with the speaker than if you bought, let's say, a fifty thousand dollar speaker. No question about it, because you know there is a law of diminishing returns as you go up the ladder. Okay, so now that said, when it comes to the cons, and again, this is my experience with my electronics in a room that's approximately 17 wide by 22 deep. And again, the gear, and I'm going to go over the gear, I use the Mephisto Griffin with the Griffin line stitch, the Pandora, Boulder Monoblocks, Boulder line stitch, DCS Rossini with the clock. And I've used, um, you know, synergistic research cables. So I've used pretty, pretty good stuff with the speaker. When it comes to when it comes to the cons of the speaker, I am going to say the cons of the speaker. Number one, the most apparent thing that I heard with the speaker was the bass was not at the level of the Alex. Yes, I am making the comparison because unfortunately that's my my speaker right now. That's the speaker that I have in the room. So it doesn't have the bass of the Alex. When the bass hit, you felt it, but it didn't It didn't feel effortless. It didn't feel muscular. It didn't feel explosive. Obviously, it could be a combination of the fact, it could be just the fact that the, the woofers were not, you know, broken in just, you know, enough. Um, but I am just telling you what I heard here. It also had the one of the th one of the biggest things about the speaker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, it didn't have the massive sound stage of my Alex. It's a bigger speaker than my Alex, yet it didn't sound as huge as my Alex. It didn't open up the same way that the uh, the that my Alex does. It never did. 
Um, in addition to that, I always felt that it was very directional. I felt like when you placed it, and I, I did the best I could, guys. I mean, could I have gotten it better and positioned it better? Yes, of course I could have, right? But I did the best job I could for being a one-man one man team, and I always felt as if the presentation, even trying to toy it in and out a little bit, the presentation never opened up wall to wall. It was very directional. It almost gave me the feeling of like a magnet pan, right? The magnet pan is pretty directional. That's the feeling that I got with the Tecton. Um, so that's one of the biggest things that I remember from the beginning um, that never changed after 100 hours of play time. It never really changed. Um, I feel like the more volume I gave it, the sound didn't exactly get larger. It didn't open up. It didn't swallow you completely. You didn't feel submersed in the presentation with more volume. All that happened was it got louder. And that's not the effect that you get with the Wilson Audio Alex. When you crank, crank up the volume, it feels like the sound never comes firing at you. It just opens, walks behind you, and it, push, it pulls you inside the music. That's one of the effects that I think Tekton doesn't have. Um, and again, you know, I don't know if it's just the nature of the design or it could be just, it needs a little more breaking time. However, um, I am going to say that I believe Tekton with this speaker that I reviewed was not really our targeting a Wilson audio Alex. Um, it's not made to target the big boys of the audio industry, the, uh, the Stellas, even the maestros, the folk, the magic OM threes. Um, you know, I, I just don't think so. I don't think that speaker's job is to come after that type of speaker. I think Tekton, they're trying to penetrate this market of speakers that are twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars MSRP and below, and they're trying to just establish them, themselves at, within that tier group. I believe, and I would not be surprised if they're working on something better than the speaker I had here. If they're probably going to do a speaker that's more money, of course, as it should be, that will come after these big boys, that will have a fight, that will have something to say, you know, with the big boys, right, of the industry. I just don't think that's a speaker. If the feeling, if, if you are under the impression that you can sell your Wilson Audio Alex or you can sell your, your top Magicos or Von Striker, whatever speaker you got, your top, right? Real, a serious, established speaker, right? A, a real speaker that we know nobody questions it being a great speaker. If you're trying to go from that speaker to the Tecton, I simply do not advise it. I don't think that's the intention of that speaker to steal you and steer you away from your speakers. That's not for that. That's that speaker to me is a great speaker to have when you look at the entire holistic presentation and what you get for your money. That speaker is awesome. That speaker will leave the Martin Logan owner questioning whether they should have a Martin Logan or not. But it's not going to come in and replace a Martin Logan Neolith. You understand what I'm saying? It's not for that. The Martin Logan Neolith owner that's the per, for, as an example, it's not a person that's going to be thinking about that particular speaker, the Tecton. You know, so I will say that I am extremely, extremely um, surprised to say it, you know, to, for lack of a better word. I am very surprised with what the Tecton speaker did in my room, but um, I have to keep it very clear and, and objective here. It is by no means a top end speaker. It isn't. Um, and I do believe, and if Tecton, you're listening to me and my video right now, I do. And I hope you are working on something, something more special, much more high end. And if you look at the statistics right now that I'm posting on my screen, these are all the votes. So you can take a look at what the results were. Okay. This is the perception, at least on my YouTube channel of how your speakers, so your speakers have done. Take these notes and put them to good use. 
what I'm going to say to you, if I can make one, one advice, I can just one recommendation, one thing that you guys can do, if it's feasible, and I know you have a budget to, 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 to hit, I understand that, I understand you're, run, you're running a tight ship over there, trying to keep things affordable, while still being extremely uh, good, sonically speaking, but if you're trying to do, if you're trying to create a new design, guys, you have to try to find a way to make the speaker more pleasant, aesthetically pleasant. You have to. And that doesn't mean just give more color choices. That's not enough. You have to try to figure out how you can make those cabinets, uh, the overall pres look of the speaker a little better. Okay, there's got to be a way. This has to be a way. Maybe your next generation of speakers. Maybe whatever you have right now, you know, whatever you have cooking right now, you have to try to come out with something a lot more pleasant to the eye. I think you're losing a lot of customers that would go to your, would buy your speakers, but they just can't get past the looks. Okay. And no, a red color is not going to do it. A blue, a purple, a Lamborghini orange. It does not matter, guys. It's That's not what people are. People are not worried about the color. I think people are worried about the overall look of the speaker. Okay. It's important that that has to be factored in into your you know finished product you have to you have to factor that in you can't just build a frankenstein because it walks and talks like a human being right it's just nobody wants to look at that right nobody wants to look at a frankenstein right it's so that's something that you have to think you know in the future i do believe that if you guys worked a little harder on the aesthetics of the speaker you would gain a lot more customers you're going to have a lot more followers you're going to have a bigger bigger you know uh crowd behind you guys that's all it, and i know it's it's easier said than done i understand it because you know you guys are again you're given a great value so something has to give you can't have it all right and i get that guys i totally get that but there has to be a way something can be done to make the speaker more pleasant to the eye okay that's that's an advice i have for you guys from the bottom of my heart you know and it's just a, a fair criticism you know that i think it needs to be factor in if you look at other offerings look at a for instance a sonos Faber olympica two or three they're pretty good looking speakers now of course I know you guys are mainly focused in sound. I get that. But you do have a demographic that you're not tapping into. And that's the demographic that likes your sound but hates your looks. You got to find a way to pull those people in. Reel them in. You have to find a way. Okay. Even if you're charging a couple of thousand more, you know, I, I don't know, two grand, $2,500 more for the next model app that's prettier, do it. Do it. I promise you, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be impressed. You know, you're going to be impressed. You're not going to get a Corvette owner to buy a Honda Civic that runs as fast as a Corvette, even though the Honda Civic might be cheaper, right? They're not going to get over the looks of the Honda Civic. And I'm, again, I'm not disrespecting those Honda Civic owners. I'm giving an example. You're not going to get a Corvette owner to jump into a Honda Civic, even if the Honda Civic is faster out of the factor than the Corvette. doesn't matter. So they have to find a way to make things more pleasant. And then you can get people to start selling their products, their more expensive products to jump into your products and give you the business. And I think that's one thing that should be important in on the, at, the top, at the top of your list for the future. All right. So there you have it, guys. Thank you again, Stephen. I appreciate you letting me borrow your speakers. Appreciate all the time and the effort. And I hope that my review of the Tecton has, you know, has given you more food for thought, guys. Uh, and I look forward to doing more of this in the future with more products to come. Thank you again and continue to subscribe. Have a great, great day. Take care.